In this video, we're going to look at the Excel page layout tab and ribbon in depth. Let's get started. As you can see, I'm in a spreadsheet that focuses on workplace safety at a fictional company. And let's say I'd like to work on the layout of this spreadsheet. I can go here to the page layout tab and click and it brings up the page layout ribbon and each of the groups that are important on this ribbon. So here at the left, I have the themes group and I can use this to add or customize a theme. Let's start with this button here, the themes button. When I click it, it gives me various options that I can choose from. Each of these themes, you'll notice, has a little different font type and is set up with some different color schemes. So let's say I like the look of this particular theme. I can click it and it changes the look and feel of the spreadsheet. In addition to applying the themes that just come built into Office and specifically Microsoft Excel, you can go down here and browse for additional themes. Those would be themes that you have downloaded to your computer. You can also go here and save the current theme so that you can reuse it over and over in the future. Okay, so applying this theme that I applied seemed to change just the font type for this spreadsheet, but actually it also changed some of these other options here. You'll notice that the default color scheme has changed to this new color scheme. If I decide to though, I can switch to a different color scheme. I can also adjust the font individually as well. Down here at effects, you can see that there are different effects I can choose from. These effects are for the most part for graphic elements. So for example, if I insert an illustration shape, let's say an arrow, I'll click and drag to put the arrow onto this spreadsheet. Now, if I go back to the page layout tab, I can use the effects to change how that arrow looks. Sometimes it's a little bit subtle, but you can see that it's adjusting, it's changing based on the effect that I select. Okay, let's move on to the page setup group. Here in this group, we can adjust some of the settings of this spreadsheet, for example, the margins. And this group is particularly important if you plan to print your spreadsheet. If you're never gonna print your spreadsheet, maybe it's not so important. But you can click here on margins and instead of having them set to normal, you can set to wide margins. So there's lots of blank space at the top and bottom, left and right. You can also go to narrow margins. So that would maximize the amount of data that you can fit on one particular page. There's also custom margins options, so you can click there to set a very specific top margin, bottom, left, right, the footer, etc. So again, those margin settings, for the most part, are only relevant if you're going to print. Next, we have orientation. By default, it's set to portrait orientation, but you can switch to landscape, and again, that's going to come into play basically when you print. Let's look at the difference. So if I have it set to portrait and I go to file and print, you can see what it's going to look like. But if I go back and change the orientation to landscape and then go file, you can see it looks much different. You can fit more horizontal data onto a single page. Next, we have size. So what is the paper size? If you're going to print, is it letter size, eight and a half by 11, or is it legal size, or any of these other sizes? And so that's, again, an important feature if you're going to print. Okay, next up, what if, instead of printing your entire spreadsheet, what if you only want to print, let's say, the first five columns, and maybe only the first 100 rows? So what I can do is click and drag to select the area that I want to print, and then go here to print area and set print area. So because I had selected that area, it's now set to be printed. And now if I go to file print or control P is another way to get to the same place, you can see that it's only set to print now the first few columns and the first 100 or so rows. If I go back, I can go back into the print area button and switch it to clear print area. And so now when I hold control and tap P, now you can see it's 30 pages worth instead of just a couple of pages because now I no longer have my print area set to a specific range. Okay, next, 
Another feature that relates to printing is breaks. Let's say that I would like to separate rows 1 through 50 and rows 51 through the end. I want to separate those two clusters of data from each other. So I clicked on row 51 and I'm going to go up here to breaks and insert page break. Now if I click away, you'll see what happened. We have this horizontal line now going between row 50 and row 51. Let's hold control and tap P again. Now you can see instead of a continuous document with each page filled, my second page ends where I put in the page break. So that's the purpose of a page break. It's to say, okay, that's all I want on this page, no more. And then whatever is below moves on to the next page. I'll go back. You can go back into the page breaks button to remove a page break, but first you'll want to select the row below the page break, and then go into page breaks, remove page break, and it's gone. It's also possible to reset all page breaks. So let's say I have one here, and I have a page break here. I could just go up to breaks, reset all page breaks, and now they're all gone. Let's look at the next option that we have in page setup, and that is background. If you want, you can browse and then upload an image to be a background for your spreadsheet. So I could select this image, and that looks terrible. I'll hold Control and tap Z to remove that image. I could try again, and this time, instead of uploading an image from my computer, I'm going to do a Bing image search, and I'm just going to type in clouds. It's showing me Creative Commons only images. That's good. And I'm gonna select this option here, click Insert, and now my spreadsheet data is in front of some clouds. I'll hold Control and tap Z. As you can tell, you need to be judicious about inserting a background into your spreadsheet. It can make it harder to read the data. It can distract from the data. So uh, just be careful with that. Next, we have an option to print titles or not to print titles. So if you remember, with my print preview, I have my column titles only on that first page. But if I go back and click print titles, let's see what happens if I tell it the rows to repeat at the top and I select row number one. I'll click this button here to go back. Columns to repeat at the left. I don't think I need to repeat any at the left. I'll click print preview. And let's take a look. Now each page has those column titles printed at the top. You can see how useful that will be so that regardless of what page you're on, you know what the data means that you're looking at. Notice that in the lower right corner of the page setup group, we have a dialog box launcher button, or I just like to call them launch buttons. And we can click that to get even more page setup options. Here we can switch from portrait to landscape. It's just another place and another way to do that. You can change the print quality of the printout that you're gonna do, the paper size. You can adjust to a certain percentage of the normal size. There's just all sorts of great options. There we have margins, header and footer. We can set those up here. And sheet, this is that same dialog box where we put in the rows to repeat at the top. But notice that we can also tell it to print grid lines black and white, and there's some other options here. And I'm gonna cancel that because there's another place where we can set those options. We're gonna look at that in just a minute, but I wanted you to see that you can get to them from here as well. Let's move on to the scale to fit group. Here, we can set the width automatically, or we can set the width to one page. It'll try to squish everything into the one page. Let's try Control P. Now when I say everything, I mean horizontally. The width of the spreadsheet is being kind of compacted into one page wide. It still is nine pages long, but because it doesn't branch off to the right onto other pages, the total number of pages has dropped from 32 or something like that down to nine. Let's go back. So that's very helpful. We can also set the height. Right now it's automatic, but we could try to squish all of these nine pages down into, let's say, six. Now I'll do Control P. You can see the data is getting smaller and smaller. That's because I'm constraining it now to one page wide and six pages long. I'll click back and I'll switch to automatic for both of these. Now that they're back to automatic, you can see that there's an option to scale the data. 
So that's another way to get the data to fit onto just a few pages or even one page. So I'll set this to be 20, control P, brings it up and you can see the results. That's gonna be tough to read. Again, we have a launch button and that takes you into those same options that we looked at earlier. Let's move over to some sheet options. Again, this has a lot to do with printing. So for example, we can set grid lines to be viewable or not. When it says view, that just means when you're using Excel. So from within Excel, do you want to see the grid lines? Yes or no. And then below that, we have print the grid lines, yes or no. It doesn't look like it's changing anything, but if I say yes to that and hold control and tap P, you can see that the grid lines are there. And I'm gonna make it easier to see that by raising this back up let's say to 80%. So now when I do control P, you can see the grid lines will print. Without that, they won't print. So generally speaking, I like to see the grid lines when I'm working in Excel, and I do usually print them. What about headings? Do you want to see the headings while you're working in Excel? Do you want to see the A column, B column? Do you wanna see those headings? And what about the numbers at the left, the row numbers? Do you want to see those? If so, check this box. What about when you print? Right now, they don't show up when I print, but if I check this box and then hold Control, tap P, you can see that the column headings and the row numbers, the row headings, I guess you could call them, those are visible and they're gonna print. And once again, we do have a launch button taking us to those same options, just to a different tab in those options. Let's move on to our final group on the page layout ribbon. It's the arrange group. And to show this better, I'm gonna go back up to my arrow and I'm going to insert some other illustrations. How about a thought bubble? I'll put that onto the screen. Maybe I'll choose a uh, different color for that. And notice that the colors are coming from the color scheme that I chose here that came from my theme. Okay, so now that I've got a couple of different elements besides my text, I can click on one of those elements like this arrow and go up here to the arrange group and choose to bring this image forward. When I click on that, it moves on top of the thought bubble. Now if I click on the thought bubble and click bring forward, then it's in front of the arrow. So think of this as just being papers or stickers or other items stacked on top of each other. Which one do you want to be closest to you? That's the one that you should bring forward. Now I've been using the top half of this button. If I use the bottom half of the button, you can see instead of bring forward, you could choose to bring to front. Now what's the difference there? The difference between those two is bring to front makes it so that whatever you have selected doesn't just move forward one at a time like this, bring forward, bring forward. Instead, if you select an object and choose the bottom half of this button, and choose bring to front, it jumps all the way to the front of the stack. Send backward works exactly the same way, but in reverse, I can send it backward one at a time, or I can select here to send it all the way back. Now there's another tool that helps us to do this maybe even easier, and that is the selection pane. So if I click on the selection pane, I get this panel or pane that opens up, and this enables me to easily see all of the elements in addition to my data that are on this spreadsheet. And I can see that the thought bubble is at the very bottom of this stack, but I could click and drag and drop it at the top, and that easily, it's in the order I want it to be in. What if I want it in the middle? Just click and drag, put it in the middle. You can also use these arrow buttons here if you'd like, but clicking and dragging sometimes is the best. Closing that panel, I'm gonna now show you the align options. And if you have just one object selected and click on align, the options are gonna be a little bit underwhelming for you. A lot of them are grayed out. So the reason why is because the idea here is that you would select two or more objects. So I've selected this thought bubble, and now I'll hold the control key and click on this smiley face. So I have two elements selected. Now, when I go to the align button, I can align left. So now they are perfectly aligned at the left edge. They're lined up. I could also align center or I could align right. So you can see it's moving them so that they're perfectly lined up, either dead center or on the right edge or the left edge. It's also possible to align top, align middle, and align bottom. Next, I'm going to hold control and select all three of these objects and I'll go back to the align button 
And this time I'm going to show you this option here, Distribute Horizontally. If I select that, it will spread each of these visual elements out, distributed exactly evenly. So to show this a little better, let's say I've got these three objects, and they're separated with this gap here. I'll hold Control and click to select all three. I go to Align, Distribute Horizontally. Now they're evenly distributed from the left to the right, based on each of them that I had selected and where the first one was and where the last one was. Now they're all equally distributed. Other options, we can distribute vertically. That's a little harder to tell in this case, but if I were to spread these out, put one up there, one down there, and then hold Control and click each one, I can align, distribute vertically, and now they're distributed evenly from top to bottom. Next, in the Align button, we can also choose to have a Snap To Grid. So look what this does. When you're moving an object, notice that it snaps now into place. It's not letting me put it in intermediate locations. It snaps from here to here. And even if I use the arrow keys on the keyboard, look, it's still snapping. It's not letting me adjust the location just little by little. There are other options to explore, like you can view the grid lines or not. You can try snap to shape. So those are some to explore if you'd like. The next option in the Arrange group is pretty useful. I use this quite often. And what this is for is let's say you're designing a graphic and it's made up of more than one element. So we've got a thought bubble, we've got a smiley face, and we've got this arrow. And maybe I want it to be set up exactly like this because of course this is how it should look. So I'm gonna hold control and click on each of these three elements and then I'll go here to the arrange group and I'll choose group and then group. So now if I move this graphic, they all move together. They have become essentially one object instead of three separate objects that overlap. You can click again to ungroup if you'd like, and you can then regroup if you want. Our final button in the arrange group is rotate, and it's just what it sounds like. You can rotate 90 degrees right, and I can just keep doing that. You can also rotate left 90 degrees. You can flip vertically, and you can flip horizontally as well. And there are even more rotation options and other size and scale options here. There's also this arrow that's above the graphic and I can just click and hold that click and drag it to rotate the object as well. So in this video, we have looked at the page layout tab and ribbon in Microsoft Excel and we've done it in depth. However, if you want to learn more about many of these options, you can go to my channel homepage and do a search for page setup in Excel, or for alignment options in Excel, or printing in Excel, and you'll learn a lot more about these topics. This video, focused on one of the Excel tabs and ribbons, is just one in a series that I'm recording that takes a look at each of the Excel tabs and ribbons one by one. So please search out my other videos in this series and learn to use Excel and the tabs and ribbons inside and out. Your knowledge of Excel will be fantastic once you've mastered all of the tabs and ribbons. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, click the thanks button below the video. Or you could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.